After me is you only graduate once, so make sure to make the most of it and have fun and make sure to uh, don't dwell on the stuff in the past and just continue to move forward. The thing I'll miss the most about CCA is probably the friends that I've been able to make in the past 10 years that I've attended Canon Christian Academy and uh, just the bonds that we've made. What I'm most excited about for my future is definitely just getting out of the state of New Mexico and pursuing my passion in dentistry. It's something that I've always found a great interest in. Antoine Elliott. I would give my classmates coming after me is just chase your dreams. Anything's possible. You can, anything you want to do, just chase after it. Never stop what you're doing. Just keep pushing yourself, even if you're tired or anything on any day. Just keep going. Push yourself to your max and just give it 110% in anything you do, honestly. Just do you. Chase your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the thing I'll probably miss most about CCA is probably just the family vibes. Like, it's, it's a chill environment, especially my classmates. Like, when I walk into school, I'm not gonna cap, it's, I didn't wanna be here. But just being able to be around my classmates, even though they bug me sometimes, it's just a chill vibe. Like, it's like a family vibe, especially with my younger friends and stuff like that. When you come to the school, it's like a whole another environment compared to other places. It's just, it feels like a family. I'm a, yeah, I definitely miss that. Definitely miss the jokes, everything like that. The, just everything, it was just a cool vibe, especially my classmates, like, that was family to me, so. What I'm most excited about for my future is just being able to experience an adult life, just going into it with a fresh start, being able to go to Arizona, going to GCU, being able to just experience the college life, start a new path, and just be able to new, meet new people and just experience it, live life to the fullest, never let anything honestly hold me back, and just go to life head on at the fullest. Quote that. <laughs> I'm an inspiration. <laughs> Jamal Elliott. advice that I would give to the classmates coming after me would be to write down any deadlines you have whether it be for scholarships or college applications and make sure that you work on them periodically and don't just wait till the last minute. Um, more generally a piece of advice that I would give to some classmates coming after me would be to invest your time and energy into relationships that you know are helping you grow whether that be spiritually, emotionally or mentally. Uh, one thing I'm going to miss most about CCA is all the people I've met here in such a short time and being able to make new friendships and build new relationships. Um, I'm also going to miss just being at the front office, doing homework, and hanging out with Mrs. Ross and Mrs. Guess. Uh, one thing I'm excited about for my future is being able to travel out of state and go to college in Colorado and being able to gain new experiences and grow in my independence. A little later down the line, I'm excited to start a family and just see where God takes me. Nicole Imani. advice that I would give to my upcoming classmen is to definitely put God first. Always keep it in the order of God, others, then yourself. Um, if you don't put it in that order and put yourself first, your year is definitely going to be rocky. And I learned that the hard way and it's getting easier now that I'm putting God first. Another piece of advice that I would give to the incoming classmen is to definitely not take your friendships for granted. 
make every memory count because you don't know when the next time you're going to see them after you graduate because everyone goes their different directions, so I think that's super important. What I'm going to miss most about CCA is definitely the Chick-fil-A and Panda on Wednesdays and the Dion's Pizza on Fridays. I'm also going to miss um, the secondary retreat every year just because I think it's super fun and it brings the school together, it's a fresh start and it definitely builds bonds in the beginning of the school year. What I'm most excited about for my future is to go to GCU and have a fresh start, make new friends, new memories and um, go to school for counseling and substance abuse and just to see what God has in store for me. Faith. Garcia. The advice that I would give the classmates coming after me, I would just make sure to always stay on your academics, make sure you keep up with your homework, any tests going on, and just make sure that you have a really good rest of your senior year because it's going to go by really fast. I'm really surprised on how quickly it's been moving, and I would just make sure you have a fun year. What I'm going to miss most about CCA is just, I, since I've only been here for two years, so I've really de developed like a lot of friendships with a lot of people in my class, and I really enjoyed that. Um, so I feel like I'll miss them the most, just having um, all six of my classmates. And we're just, I don't know, hanging out with everyone, doing schoolwork together. And I think that's what I'm going to miss most. Even just some of the activities we do, especially some of the things the school does, I really enjoy. I've enjoyed that for the past few years I've been here. So I feel like those will be what I miss most. What I am most excited for in my future is, I guess, moving to Montana will be a new experience. And I'm just excited to see how that goes and be able to take part in a lot of outdoor activities, which is one thing. And just also just seeing where my future goes, because hopefully um, I've been interested in do doing medicine for a while. So I'm just excited to see how that plays out and just being able to be um, like more independent and just meeting new people, new kinds of people from all different states. And I think that's just gonna be a really cool experience and I'm pretty excited for that. I'll be a little nervous to leave home, but I think overall it's gonna be an exciting um, new opening in my life. Ms. Ripley Rasky. The advice I would give to the classes coming after me is to not procrastinate and to be careful with your time because it goes by really fast, so just enjoy it while you can. The thing I'm going to miss most about CCA is um, being able to see my family and friends here and bugging my little brother in the hallways, you know, just messing around. Uh, the thing I'm most excited for for my future is um, being in a new environment and meeting all kinds of friends and finally being able to use the school that Ms. Fee gave us in mock trial. Um, just excited for that whole experience. Ms. Galila Rosales. Classmates coming after me would probably be. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone else said it in my class, but I, I didn't see their interviews. But I'm pretty sure I would say not to procrastinate just because I'm like the queen of procrastinating and it did not end up well for me. So, <clears throat> just like a word of advice instead of being like, oh, I'm just gonna continue to chill, watch a movie or something like that, like, nah, like just get your homework done because it's gonna add up and it's gonna add up and then your grade's gonna go down and you're gonna be begging the teachers like I always did, be like, hey, please, like, can you like read, like, help me? And they're gonna be like, no, so like just, my overall advice is just don't procrastinate, it's not worth it. Uh, what I'm going to miss most about CCA is probably uh, Pastor Sean's success to talk about COVID-19. 
Like that really lit up my day. It really like made me like smile more. And no, I'm just playing. It's actually just gonna be my classmates. I'm gonna miss them for sure. Uh, they really became like a family to me, especially you know Jamal and Ripley and Nicole and oh you know all my all my classmates, all of them. Uh, I'm really gonna miss them because they're all going off to college out of state. So I'm gonna be kind of alone here, but it's all good because I'm gonna start other things here. So I'm for sure gonna miss my classmates. What I'm most excited about for my future is just being able to go out into the world and like see what's out there because there's just so many opportunities and I still don't know what I want to do, but um, I for sure know that I want to get a degree in business, but it's just like later on, you know, maybe in January. I just don't know yet, but for sure I'm just going to want to start working for a bit, get some money under my belt and then see what college has for me. What advice <laughs> sorry, Vanessa, sorry, sorry. Are we recording right now? Yeah. Okay, let's start again. Miss Adriana Salazar. And the senior uh, introduction was video produced by the class of 2023. They'll be here next year. And now, Pastor Ray. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to our graduating class of 2022. Congratulations. You guys are all excited for you. All right. I Faith Garcia is going to come and open us in a word of prayer. So would you guys join us in prayer? She come and share us. I want to thank you, each and every one of you, for coming out and supporting our class of 2022. Um, I would like to open us up in a word of prayer. So if you can bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to start off by thanking you for a special day. Thank you for getting us through this year. Thank you for these amazing friendships you built in this class. I ask that now when we go into our different directions that you help us become the wise leaders and influencers you want us to be. I ask that you help equip us uh, with all we need to make a difference in this world. I ask for your protection over us as we leave and go different ways. I ask you to guard our path from evil. I um, give us wisdom and direction when making decisions. Teach us to listen to your voice. Help us to lean on you and go to you when we feel lost. I pray that wherever we go, we find a church, a family where we call home. Help us to be bold in our faith and bring it wherever we go. I pray that you keep and strengthen these friendships that were created this year. I pray that this ceremony goes amazingly and smoothly. Thank you again for this amazing day. We love you. Amen. Now I would like to announce the teachers and staff here at Canon Christian Academy. Um, our secondary English, Mrs. Valella. Our secondary math, Mr. Valella. Secondary science, Mr. Ortega. Secondary Spanish, Mrs. Silva. Uh, secondary History, Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> Middle School Math, Mrs. Gibson. <laughs> Government and Economics, Dr. Colgrove. <laughs> Superintendent, Pastor Ray, and wife, Marguerite Jaramillo. <laughs> Headmaster, Pastor Sean. Office Administrator, Mrs. Guest. And then our board members, um, Lucas Luna. Adrian Guest. And Danny Hawks. I'd like to thank you all once again for coming out to celebrate with us. My name is Nicole Imami, and I have the privilege of introducing our class valedictorian. 
Um, this person is one of the best people I have met here at CCA. She is a ray of sunshine, bringing joy and laughter into every room she walks into. And anyone who has spoken to her can tell you that she never fails to ask you how your day is going. She loves fearlessly and always puts others before herself. Along with her stunning personality and hilarious sense of humor, she has a competitive spirit that can knock you off your feet, both figuratively and literally. <laughs> She is the most hardworking and dedicated person I know, and not to mention the best study partner. I am blessed to know her and call her a friend, and there is truly no one more deserving of this recognition. And now, it is my honor to introduce to you our CCA Class of 2022 valedictorian, Ripley Raski! <laughs> <laughs> All right, hello everyone. Um, how's everyone doing? How's your good? <laughs> All right, I just really quick want to open up with prayer. So, dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for all that you've blessed, with me, blessed me with. Give me the strength to deliver this speech and to be able to glorify you as well. All right, amen. All right, <laughs> so I'm just going to open up. I want to just read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man I, or a woman, I pushed childish ways behind me. Now we see a, but a poor reflection as in a, a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall truly, I shall now fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. These three words, faith, hope, and love, are the most important aspects of Christianity. These are not just words to be written on decor or to name your children, but they are foundations of which we Christians live by. Faith is why I'm standing here today. Faith brought me to CCA. Before I had come here, I didn't know what the true meaning of faith was. You read it on signs plastered around, but I never stopped to think about how this five-letter word should be playing into my life. When I came to CCA, I will admit, I was a little intimidated, even a little scared. It was a new environment, but when I looked around and saw how God surrounded this school with love, I knew that I wanted to do better. I knew I had to hold myself to a new standard in order to get to where I am now. It almost feels like a dream standing here. I have grown so much stronger in my faith, and that's the power of it. It doesn't take an overwhelming amount of effort to grow your faith. And when you want something bad enough, the work that comes along with it doesn't even feel like work. Every challenge and trial is a blessing. God was making me stronger and gave me the courage and strength to be standing here today. When I think of hope, I think of the hope I have for everyone's future, the hope I have for my future. I want so badly to make my family and friends proud. I want to see all of my classmates grow and become the people they want to be, hopefully good. I want to see them achieve their dreams and bless those around them. When we are anxious in life, God gives us hope to calm our stresses and to be able to trust that God is always with me and there for my family and friends, and he will always take care of them and guide their paths. The final but most important, as it is stated in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now these three remain, faith and hope and love, but the greatest of them all is love. God has shown us love when he sent his son to die for us. It is my job as a Christian to be able to spread that love with everyone I meet. I just want to take this time to say how thankful I am for all the people that have impacted my life and showed me said love. Dad, you have taught me most of my favorite things. Movies, music, history, books, survival, the list continues. I'm going to miss watching movies and listening to music with you, going to the shooting range, and our overall talks about just about everything. You have given me so many life lessons. The one I hear on weekly is either you need to carry a purse and to put my keys in a place where I don't spend 15 minutes looking for them, probably should have put them in that purse that you recommended. You always push me to do my work and focus on my future and my studies. So thank you, Dad. I love you so much. Mom, thank you for all that you have done for me. I'm going to miss hanging out with you and pretty much you taking care of me. Hopefully you'll stay in contact with me. 
JR, you have been such a wonderful influence in my life. And I will miss talking, you talking to me about cars and all the times that I'm in a bad mood and you cheer me up with one of your funny jokes. I thank God for him bringing my mom and you together. You two have shown me what a godly relationship should look like. Gina, I can't remember a time that you've not been in my life. I've been so blessed to have you in my life. And I'm going to miss the times when you're watching a movie and I just jump in towards the end and annoy you with a million questions. <laughs> Quincy, Ian, McKenna, and Parker, I love you all so much. I'm going to miss our after-school bike rides and our basketball games, playing hide-and-go-seek at night, and overall annoying Dad and Gina. I'll especially miss when Quincy, Parker, and I would go to Flying Star early in the mornings during the summer, and the amount of times Parker almost got hit by a car. I'm kind of surprised you even got to see me graduate. The love that the staff has shown me has been like no other. You've all given me examples of living Christian lives. I want to especially say thanks to Pastor Sean for letting me into the school. Um, Mr. V, and just him teaching me how to handle someone that has a strong dislike towards you. My, t <laughs> my two favorite office ladies, where I don't see one of them, but uh, not only did they pay me a great sum to include them in my speech, but they have really given me a great last year. I want to say thanks to you, Mrs. Ross and Mrs. Guest. You two have shown me such love, and every day I was so excited to work with you up front. You're examples of godly women, and I have been so blessed um, with the love that you have shown me. Now these two, past two years, I've made six best friends. Delilah, I've enjoyed these two years with you, and we have shared many laughs, and I want to wish you good luck as you head on through college, and as you know, pray for me that I don't get killed in Montana. <laughs> Antoine, you are a great friend. I have enjoyed all the conversations about that very lovely pet shop down the road and the talks we have had about animals, and hopefully our fish, Mr. White and Mr. Orange, will survive long enough to be able to see them again. Thank you for my, being my friend. Now, Faithy, Faithalicious, all the nicknames that have developed over the years. I love you so much. We have grown so much closer this year, and I've really gotten to know you. You are one of my best friends, and I'm going to miss all the movies that we watched. You know how much I love analyzing and talking about the scenes in the movies, and you've just been the best person to do that with. Thinking back, I think I'm the only one that's chosen any of the movies, so over the summer, let's work on being a little bit more assertive. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I love you so much, and thank you for the love that you've shown me. Nicole, I've only known you for a year, and I'm already so close with you. When I found out that you only lived 10 minutes away from me, I can't even express how excited I was. I'm never going to forget the times I would hang out with you after school when you helped me cook for Spanish class, and the times we didn't do any studying, and we would just watch movies and talk. We just shared so many laughs, and you have been a blessing in my life, and I want to grow my relationship with you in the future. So thank you, Nicole, for everything. Now, Jamal. <laughs> I have written a pro and con list, but for your sake, I'm only going to be reading the pros. <laughs> well, I seem to have forgotten the pro list. <laughs> All right, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I've really grown close to you this year, Jamal, and I'm so thankful for you. I'm going to miss picking on you every morning and the stupid conversations and debates that we have, and there is a lot. You really are one of my best friends. All I can think of when I see Jamal is I wonder what snacks he has not brought for me today. <laughs> In general, Jamal, you're a really good guy, and you better stay in contact with me. Who knows, maybe in the future, when you're a mechanic, I'll bring my truck to you for an oil change. That is, of course, if you can get the bolt off in one piece by then. Thanks for the love that you have shown me, Platinum Bestie. Now, Avery, Cucuturo, for some reason, that was a nickname that came up on the uh, Google, as I like to call you. I still remember the first day I came to the school, and you introduced me around, and you made me feel at home. Even though it took a while until I finally warmed up to you, you've been the best to be around. I've enjoyed every moment with you. That is until you get a little too crazy and I start fearing for my life. <laughs> I'm going to miss seeing you every day in the morning. That is if you make it to school in time for the morning. I'm going to, I'm going to miss bringing you drinks when you're at work, your distinct laugh, and your overall, overall just being with you when you're in class. So Avery, thank you for the love that you've shown me. From the first day to the last day, I'm going to miss you like crazy, and you also better keep in touch. I love you so much. I love you guys all so much. I know that was a lot of people, but everyone I mentioned in this room, anyone that has shown me the love is the reason why I'm here today. Why would God say the love is greatest of all? It's because when you show someone love, they want to give that love back to others. It makes them want to be a better person. This is the most true for me. It was important to show the love people showed me because the love that you have shown me makes me want to be a better person. I'll go out into the world and show people that same love because I know what it can do for someone. Love changes your life. Love is the reason I am here. So thank you to everyone who has shown me that love. Alrighty, Ripley, thank you for that inspiring speech. Hi guys, good afternoon. My name is Jamal Elliott and I was given the task of introducing our guest speaker. 
So this speaker, I would like to say he's very close to me. He is my stepfather. Over the years, he has taught me a lot of things I would not have known. Uh, it's shaped me into the man I've come into today. I've been able to learn a lot of things over the past years of high school, but also middle school and throughout elementary. Uh, not only was he my father, but he was our science class teacher for the last three years. He did put up with a lot of our nonsense for the whole time instead of trying to learn chemistry formulas, we were trying to go to the coffee shop. <laughs> but um, he is a very inspirational role model. He taught us how to stay calm, how to keep our composure when under pressure, but also never to stop believing in our faith and keep going strong. I'd like to introduce our, a very warm welcome to our speaker, Dr. Orly Ortega. How cool is that? Um, this is a, a hugely important day. Um, mark my words, it's a, it's a day that is not soon forgotten. Um, I think this year has been a huge year. Uh, COVID was hot in our, our tails again. Um, it caught up with some of us twice, uh, but regardless, uh, our students persevered, they pushed through, and I think they learned a lot about our world and how it tries to operate, but even in light of that, they're here. So. I think we should hand them a, a big round of applause that they pushed through all of that. I couldn't be prouder of our graduates. Uh, we know that these are precarious days that they are growing up in, and that says a lot, and that says a lot about them. Um, being speaker today, um, had me thinking back on my own graduation day and some things that uh, came into mind for me. Um, I recall and I realized just how regimented school is. Um, from the, I mean, their whole life, the more, from the moment you're you know, four or five years old, you're going to school and it's up on time, to school on time, get to class on time, uh, and then home is homework and to bed on time and then repeat, right? So these guys have done that for the last 12 plus years for the most part. So uh, I think even to this day, they've been told when to be here, what to wear, when you're gonna speak, but all that ends today. All of that is done for the most part, at least in the high school setting. And just thinking back on my own graduation day, um, I remember walking out of the pit, uh, going to find my parents in the parking lot, um, and it was a breezy day like today, and I'm holding my diploma, the robes are blowing in the wind, I'm holding on to my cap, and just having this sense of absolute freedom that all of that was over. High school is over. And it was just such a joy. I was just so elated to, to be done with that. I had worked really hard in high school and it was finally over. No more somebody telling me where I had to be. Uh, and I have to admit that even in that same moment, there was a, a touch of fear that was present. And I think it was for the same reason, just because high school is over. High school is over. And I think that's where that the touch of fear came from. And I think part of that also comes from the fact that over the past 12 plus years, your path has been a singular path leading up to this moment, this day. Your path has been uh, with one goal in mind and that's this right here is, is graduation. Um, and I think now your choices in path are limitless. You can, you can go to college uh, to study what? To go where? In state, out of state, 
Uh, military has the same type of choices. Which branch to study what? Go in for the, the two, four, six years or enlist, be full blown, make it a career? In what, doing what? Uh, trade school, you could be an airline mechanic, an auto mechanic, you can work on, on cars, um, you could learn to weld, uh, or you could stay at home and, and, and raise a family. I mean, I think the choices are just so limitless for you. And I think some of those choices have probably begun. Uh, if not, they're, they're, uh, they're pretty much in your face right now. Now, I'm not trying to streak, uh, strike fear in you because as believers, there's four words that can easily put your mind at rest. And that is God is in control. So, and I think um, this, this day belongs to the Lord for all that he's done for you guys. So graduation is still a time of reflection. It's a time of looking back. It's remembering what you've been through and what you have accomplished. And it's also an exciting time of looking forward at all the prospects of new memories and brand new adventures to have. And I think that's pretty cool. So graduation is traditionally uh, a day of remembrance, but this stage right here is the launch pad for the rest of your life. And in your successes and failures to come, uh, it's been at least my experience that you think back to this day. This is day one, when you finished high school and then you began to branch out in your life. Graduation day is the starting gate of a new race that you're about to begin and you always reflect on your starting point. Now, since the theme of any graduation is Memories and remembrance, uh, like I said, <clears throat> um, it made me think back to my own graduation. And I would like to offer our students um, a memento of graduation. It's a tradition that was passed on for my high school principal, Dr. Stoughton. Uh, his tradition was a coin giving tradition. And as we crossed the, the pit, uh, crossed the stage that day, he had handed us a freshly minted 1989 penny. Now, I'll explain more about the penny, but um, I, I'm not gonna give you guys a, a penny for 2022. Uh, I'm actually gonna give you a, a CCA coin that I've had designed and made up. Now, these, are, these coins are pro tem because you guys asked me to speak about six weeks ago and this is about a 10 week process. The design and the, the making of the, the, the casting of the mold and, and so uh, I'll be handing you the, the legit one uh, before too long. So uh, when you cross this stage uh, in a little bit here, I'll be presenting you guys with uh, a CCA coin. All right, so I've been kind of going on about um, remembrance and memories, but it is now time to kind of turn our attention the other way and look into the future for our graduates. So I would like to read uh, a couple lines of scripture, but um, I'd really like to pray before we do that. So if you would indulge me in prayer. Thank you, Lordy, for this day. Thank you for these moments. Lordy, we ask that you just bless it, Lord. Help us to hear to discern, give us the courage to apply your word to our lives. We do these things, Lord, for your glory. And we come before you in Jesus' name. Now, what I wanna to read to you is from Revelation chapter two. This is John writing to the church at Pergamum. Pergamum. And John is writing as the Holy Spirit is inspiring him to write. And what's really cool about this is the Holy Spirit is giving John Jesus' words, and it goes like this. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, and that taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin, so they ate food, sacrificed to idols, and committed sexual immor immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans, and I tell you, repent. Otherwise, I will soon come to you and will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Jesus says in this next verse, 
Whoever has hear, ears, let them hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And this is what he is saying. To the one who is victorious, I will give you some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. So the question that comes up, the question that arises, is what's the significance of the white stone that Jesus is promising here? Well, in Roman trials, there were uh, panels of judges, and they would use colored stones uh, to vote for defendant's innocence or guilt. A black stone was a registered vote for guilty, and a white stone was a vote of innocence. Um, all the rocks would be counted, and the verdict was determined based on the color of the rocks. The Greeks as well, they used a black and white uh, colored stone for casting votes on civic issues during uh, public elections. And they would set up large vats throughout the city uh, as designated locations, and black and white pebbles were cast into them, kind of like polling stations these days. And black pebbles were votes against the issue, and white pebbles were a vote in favor of. And this is exactly why Jesus offered a white stone to overcomers and to those who were victorious in accepting Christ. In Revelation 2.17, he is declaring that all the evidence against us has been reviewed, and because of the amazing purging work of Jesus' blood, he has judged us not guilty. Jesus is not only announcing that we're free and forgiven, we also have a full acquittal from past sins. He is saying, my vote is for you. You are forgiven. I am putting my full support behind you. I am in favor of you. And that's exactly my message to our graduates. Jesus loves you, and he is in your favor. And let us never forget that. So I would like to present to each of our graduates a white stone. On each stone is their current name. And this is the white stone that I'm casting in your favor. Jesus will one day give you a white stone with the new name on it, written uh, or known only to the one who receives it. So if you would please come up as I call your name. Faith. Welcome, baby. Antoine. Avery. Delilah. Nicole. Ripley. And JMO. So, what does this really mean? What is this that you're holding? I mean, I know it's a it's a stone, but um, we give value to these things. And you need to hear that regardless of who you were or what you have been before coming to Christ, it doesn't matter. What matters is who you have become because of Christ. And as I said earlier, these are precarious days that our kids are growing up in. And because of that, I want this stone to serve as a memento. I want it to serve as affirmation something for you to remember each time you see it. Remember your full acquittal and your complete release from past sinful lives and even the memories because even God remembers your past sins no more. When Satan tries to cast a vote against you, remember that Christ has already cast his vote for you and you have been found not guilty. Romans 8.31 tells us if God be for us, who can be against us? I believe that God proudly looks at you graduates and says, look what I've done. Look what I've done. The one vote that truly matters has already been cast in your favor. 
So in closing, if there were any parting shots or last words that I could possibly think to leave you with in hopes of any one thing you would remember from this day, uh, it would have to be a request from you. It would, it would be a plea, really. And that is because of the days that are now set before you, don't let go of Jesus. Amen? Thank you, guys. It's now time for our rose ceremony. Jamal? Jamal? I would like to dedicate this rose to my mom. Ever since I was little, you always had faith in me. No matter what I did, you always encouraged me. Mama, I want to thank you for always being there for me in the darkest and brightest times of my life. Thank you for raising me to be respectful and gentle. Thank you for putting up with my nonsense. Most of all, thank you for being the strong and courageous woman everyone knows you to be, the one who never gives up and is hardworking in everything she does. Stepping into the next chapter of my life, I will constantly remember what you have told me. I will always remember to never give up on anything I do and will make decisions to better my future and keep God close to my heart at all times. Thank you for always being my number one supporter. I greatly appreciate and love you, Mama. Love, Gordo. <laughs> Nicole. I dedicate this rose to my mom. Thank you for always pushing me to be a better person. You have been by my side and on my side in every situation. Your hugs, no matter how much I say I don't want them, never fail to make me feel loved and safe. I cannot thank you enough for all the support you have given me and for showing up time and time again without fail. You have gotten me to where I am now and I will cherish every memory we have together. I am going to miss all our laughs and conversations. I will never forget how patient you are with me, no matter how much I procrastinate. I love you and can't wait for our FaceTime calls when I'm in college. With love, Nicole. Faith. I would like to dedicate this rose to my parents. My lovely mom, you are the true definition of a strong woman. I will always follow your footsteps. You have not only taught me how to love, but also showed me great love. You are the most positive and selfless woman I have ever known. You taught me how to forgive and how to heal. You are my shoulder to cry on and my rock. You are my best friend. Seeing you worship and love our Heavenly Father inspires me so much. I pray to become like you when I grow up. Thank you for encouraging and loving me. I am going to miss having our Saturdays, laughing and crying with you in the car and listening to music. I love you so much, Mama. Dad, watching you become the man you are today has been my inspiration. You have set an amazing example of what a godly father should be. I want you to know how blessed I am to be your daughter. You are hardworking, brave, and courageous. Thank you for all you do for me and the whole family. You have always known what's best for me, and I will forever be grateful. Thank you for holding me when I was at my lowest. Thank you for making me feel safe and loved. I remember crying for you when I was young and you were at work. I would make mom call just so I could hear you. I will always be the Spider-Man loving little girl by your side. I love you both so much. 
Thank you for being amazing role models for me. I will miss you both. Ripley. I want to dedicate my rose to one of the people that have impacted my life so much. Mom, I don't know where to start. I just want to say thank you for all that you have done for me. You have helped me to become the woman I am today. You always push me to do my best, and when I look at you, I see someone I want to become. You are the strongest woman I know. Whenever I am having a bad day, you are there to cheer me up. I'm going to miss everything we do together, whether it's when you're teaching me new dishes to cook, crazy art projects you come up with, or just fighting over what movie to watch. Words are not enough to show how much you have impacted my life. I will carry everything you have taught me and bless others with the lessons you have given me. Mom, I love you more, even if you say it's impossible. Your daughter, Ripley. <laughs> Avery. I had a pretty tough time writing this because I couldn't figure out who I wanted to dedicate this one rose to. So instead, I've decided to dedicate it to my entire family. I know it's just one rose, but I want to start off with my mom. You've impacted my life way more than you can ever imagine. You showed me what a real woman of God looks like and how I should carry myself with Christ in me. I love our late night talks. Thank you for listening, even when it's gibberish coming out of my mouth. Dad, you've shown me what a godly man is and how he should treat a woman. You've been so caring and loving throughout all my crazy mood swings. And I want to thank you for trying to learn how to communicate with me. Abby, I just want to say you've been the most amazing little sister anyone could ask for. You do so much for me, and I know I forget to tell you how grateful I am, but I thank God for you every day. Seeing you grow up has been so wonderful to watch, and I know God is continuing to shape you into a beautiful, godly woman. Cece, you've been my best friend, sister, cousin, literally my entire life. When you FaceTime me, my day gets better because we laugh so much. I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. Lastly, I want to thank my grandma. You've always been there for me, even when I go off a path a little. You're always there to tell me you love me. I appreciate all the words of wisdom you've given me over the years, and I hold them near and dear to my heart. Once again, to my family, I love you all. Avery. Antoine. I was torn when I found out that I have one rose to present, simply because I have three people that have got me here today. I will be splitting this rose between three amazing people. Half of this flower is to my mama. Words cannot express how grateful I am for you. You truly are the strongest person I know. I strive daily to come close to having the servant heart you have. You are my best friend. Chela, I do not know what I'm going to do without you. I love you. And the other half of the flower goes to my abuelita. You are the matriarch of this family. Without you, I would not be standing here today. Thank you for your sacrifice when you crossed that border in order to make a better life for your family. Your courage is something I hope to attain one day. Para mi abuelita, eres la matriarca de esta familia. Sin usted, 
no estaría aquí hoy. Gracias por su sacrificio cuando cruzó esa frontera para hacer una vida mejor para su familia. Su coraje es algo que espero lograr algún día. And finally, the stem. Without the stem, there could not be a rose. To me, the stem symbolizes strength, courage, and security. I will be giving this to my rock. The man who stepped up as a father when I did not have one. The person who took me in as his own. <laughs> and loved me unconditionally. No one deserves this more than you, Pops. I know I do not say this enough, but I love you. Dalila Rosales. Finalmente llegó el día y esta fue una de las decisiones más difíciles que he tenido que tomar. Ha habido tantas personas que me han influido y ayudado a crecer y convertirme en la persona que soy hoy, el día de hoy. Si pudiera darles una rosa a cada una de esas personas, estaríamos aquí todo el día. Pero mamá, esta rosa es para ti. Una rosa es una flor sin tiempo. La rosa es un símbolo de una de las emociones más poderosas, como el amor y la pasión. Tú eres como los pétalos pero no podemos olvidarnos de las otras partes de la rosa. Debo darle las gracias a mi padre y a mi hermano por ser el tallo. Lo que sostiene los pétalos, pero también pueden ser las espinas. Hay veces que pueden ser un dolor de cabeza, pero siempre están ahí para protegerme. Mamá, Fuiste la primera persona que me mostró estas cualidades y me ayudó a florecer para poder mostrar a los demás mi loco amor y pasión. También me has mostrado cómo trabajar duro y nunca renunciar a mis sueños, sin importar qué tan difícil se ponga la vida. Hemos pasado por muchas cosas juntas y no sé cómo voy a poder irme sin llamarte todos los días con preguntas básicas solo para poder saber cómo estás y pretender que estoy en la habitación contigo, solo para contarte sobre mi día hasta que me mandes a dormir. Gracias por ayudarme a realizar mis metas. No estaría aquí si no fuera por ti. Pero sécate las lágrimas porque esto es solo el comienzo de un nuevo capítulo en nuestras vidas, donde podremos crear más recuerdos. Nunca olvides que aunque me haya ido lejos, siempre te voy a querer muchísimo. Con mucho amor, Dalila. Wow, the day is finally here and this was one of the hardest decisions I had to make. There have been so many people that have influenced me and helped me. If I could give each a rose, we'd be here all day. Mom, this rose goes to you. A rose is a timeless flower. A rose is a symbol of some very powerful emotions like love, passion, and admiration. You are the petals, but I can't forget about the other parts of the rose. I could say thank you to my dad and brother for being the stem, the holder of the rose, but you guys are the thorns. You guys are a pain to deal with, but more importantly, you are always there to protect me. Mom, you were the person who helped me blossom with crazy love and passion. You have shown me how to be a hard worker and never give up on my dreams, no matter how hard life gets. I know how I'm going to go on. I don't know how I'm going to go on without, without asking you questions every day, just so I can stay in the room and talk until I get kicked out for the night. Thank you for getting me here and help me achieve my goals. Wipe your tears because this is just the beginning of a new chapter in life where we can make more memories. Don't forget, even when I'm gone and far away, 
that I love you so much and will always love you so much. Delila. So as you can see, uh, there's a couple of roses left. We would like to present this to an amazing man, teacher, and spiritual leader. Words cannot express how grateful we are to have had you as a teacher. We love you, Dr. Colgrove. You have taught us that no matter what age you are, it is never too late to come to Christ, being that you came to Christ at the age of 80. Nobody deserves this more than you. We love you. Board members, Superintendent Jaramillo, Headmaster Gibson, after reviewing the transcripts of the students presented before you, I testify they have all met the graduation requirements set forth by the Board of Canon Christian Academy along with New Mexico Public Education Department. Therefore, I present to you the graduating class of 2022. They're empty. Oh, no, I'm just joking. This young man is headed off to pursue a career in dentistry, but I imagine he'll never be too far from animals. He is passionate, diligent, but he has expensive taste, so he may need to stick with the dentistry. This diploma is presented to Mr. Antoine. This next diploma goes to a young man with many friends. He razzes his classmates mercilessly, and he, while well, he has a beaming smile the whole time. He has a good vibe, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to present this diploma to Mr. Jamal Dennis Elliott. My only regret concerning the next graduate is that we only had her at the academy for her senior year. She's intelligent, dependable, and cachinacious, which means giggly. <laughs> uh, I know that her future will be bright and successful. This diploma goes to Miss Nicole. the letters from Congress. These are awesome. Um, the next graduate is a quiet young woman. Well, at least that's except when she's in the water with manatees, <laughs> at which points her screams and laughter can be heard from very far away. She's diligent, she's sensitive, and she is faithful, thus explaining her name. This diploma has been earned by Miss Faith Trinity Garcia. This diploma is that of a young woman who is joyful, witty, and not afraid to get her hands dirty. She's mindful of her responsibility, yet she enjoys opportunities that life presents her. I know we'll be hearing great things about her future. This diploma belongs to Ms. Ripley Margaret Elizabeth Lasky.
This diploma goes to a compassionate and hardworking young woman. She sacrifices in order for her friends and her family. I know she will continue to serve others throughout her life. I look forward to hearing all that she does in all of her endeavors. This diploma is for Ms. Dalila Lynette Rosales. Last but not least, this graduate is a young lady with a great sense of humor, one that far exceeds her sense of punctuality. <laughs> she is conscientious, adventurous, and engaging, which can be trouble. But I am really going to miss my homegirl. <laughs> this diploma has been waiting for Miss Abriana Esther Salazar. This is the graduating class of Canon Christian Academy 2022. Okay, so, oh, so, <laughs> I'm just playing. So I just want to first off, well, first off, I'm Ibrana Salazar, if you guys don't, oh, so it's, never mind. Um, I just want to thank all of you guys for coming out today. It really means, <sighs> sorry, I was running pretty fast. Uh, I just want to thank all of you guys for coming out today. It really means a lot to me and my class. Um, uh, next, we're going to be presenting our class song along with the slideshow. So. Whew, really sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to be saying sorry. So I was in charge of making the slideshow this year. And um, while I was making it, it was just like seeing everyone going from when they were a kid to when they were a preteen to now. First off, I just want to say y'all had glow ups. Okay, y'all look real good. Per. Um, but it was really awesome. And then putting in all the memories that we've had this year. I did get kind of emotional. No, I did not cry. But I laughed a lot because I was just like... I'm so grateful to have such an amazing class to graduate with and it being so, um, like it's real, you know, like we all have a genuine connection and that just means the world, you know? Cause I know like one of the biggest things is family and let me tell you, our class felt like a family. Everything with it, the arguments, the laughing, all of it came with it and I just wanna say, I love you guys and thank you for making this last year amazing. Stuck in the middle of the sea I'll sail the world To find you If you ever find yourself lost in the dark And you can't see I'll be the light To guide you Find out what we're made of When we are called to help our friends in need you can count on me like one, two, three, I'll be there. And I know when I need it, I can count on you like four, three, two, you'll be there. Cause that's what friends are supposed to do, oh yeah. And then you turn and then you just can't fall asleep I'll sing a song beside you And if you ever forget how much you really mean to me Every day I will remind you Oh, 
find out what we're made of When we are called to help our friends in need You can't count on me like one, two, three I'll be there And I know when I need it I can count on you Like four, three, two You'll be there Cause that's what friends are supposed Upcoming senior year. Yeah, I'm gonna take a no thousand comment. Years. <laughs> okay. Sorry, no paparazzi right. at this time. Uh, there you go. Okay. How do you feel about this? Oh. How do you feel <laughs> about this upcoming senior year, Jamal? Honestly, no. Okay, I'm just trying to get through this school year. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Faith, how do you? Faith, how do you feel about this upcoming year? Pretty excited to graduate. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ross, how do you feel about this upcoming year? I'm excited. It's gonna be my second year, oh, and. Okay. Uh, uh, woo. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so how do you feel about this upcoming year? Ready to get it over with. Okay. How do you feel about this upcoming year? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about this upcoming year, Antoine? No, no comment? Okay. I feel pretty... Mm. <laughs> because that's what friends are supposed to do. Oh, yeah. And then you turn and then you just can't fall asleep I'll sing a song beside you And if you ever forget how much you really mean to me Every day I will remind you Oh, Find out what we're made of When we are called to help our friends in need you can't count on me like one, two, three, I'll be there. And I know when I need it, I can count on you like four, three, two, you'll be there. Cause that's what friends are supposed to do. Good afternoon. My name is Antoine, if you haven't already heard. Um, so we did it, guys. Uh, all the late nights doing homework, stress, and study sessions, and maybe doing our homework in homeroom, maybe just a little bit, has got us to this point in time that we are now. Can't even talk, but. 
Uh, now, as much as everyone wants to hear, the tassel was worth the hassle. Now let's throw these little dangly things to the side so we can get the heck out of here. Um, I like to take a time, take time to, wow, excuse me. I like to take a moment to recognize it because it is so much more. The turning of the tassel goes back to the 14th century. It symbolizes an ending of a chapter and a start to a new beginning. With that being said, I am so grateful to be standing here today, not with my former classmates, but with my brothers and sisters. Uh, here's to the class of 2022. You guys would please rise. And on the count of three, we're gonna turn our tassels. One, two, three. Now you may turn your tassel from right to left. Hey guys, we did it. <laughs> okay, so we're coming to the end, so if you could all join me in, in prayer, bow your heads, close your eyes. So, thank you Jesus for this day. Thank you for letting us all be here today. Thank you for all the opportunity uh, that you have given us to be here. Thank you for all of my classmates, um, just for all the time and great times I had with them. And I just pray that you would lead our futures and that um, you would help us thrive and honor you in any way that we could. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, I know that we're done, but don't run off with your graduate. So every year, a every year, the senior class does a class project. Now, if you have been here in the past, you have seen that we like to go a little bit of extreme. And I think this year we did a lot because there's only seven of us. Um, but we would like to say thank you to everyone that's helped us uh, get all this stuff done, especially Pastor Sean. We know all the hard times that he had staying late with us. So our plaque is under construction still, so let me just uh, say thank you to all of our sponsors real quick. First, we have Ace Hardware. We have Brycina and Anthony Aragon. We have Build It Right. We have Castillo Ready Mix. We have Semco. We have Craig Independent Tire Company. We have Lone Mountain Construction. We have Lorenzo Marquis. We have Poblar, <coughs> my bad, Poblar S Enterprises. We have Soil Secrets. We have the Rojas team. We have Trees That Please. And yeah. <laughs> so before you can go run away with your graduate, if you would like to follow me through these two double doors, and we will show you our, our class project. Oh, yep. <laughs> 